my present and future subscribers thank you very much for being here thanks for clicking on this video and if you don't know who I am I'm Angela from Violet Flame and I'm currently working on a series of videos featuring the secret gems in the city this is going to be the third episode so if you haven't seen the previous two videos you can find them in a separate playlist on my channel the playlist is called hidden gems sofia in this episode i'm going to show you five places that have more of a local feel i hope you will enjoy this video and if not i hope to catch you next time the Lions Bridge perfectly fits into the category of hidden gems even though it's located on one of the busiest intersections of the city. The bridge was built in 1891 by the Czech architect Václav Prosek. I'm hiding in the shade of the lion because it's very hot. So this is the Lions Bridge. Um, I think it's a very nice bridge, not only because I love cats, but also because um, it was built on a spot where there used to be a Roman bridge and you can still see the ruins from that old bridge. The ancient ruins date to the second century AD and they were discovered during a major reconstruction of the square next to the Lions Bridge. The mineral water taps in Sofia are among its best kept secrets. A lot of tourists go to the central mineral bath because it's one of the most Instagrammable buildings in the city. Quite close to the building you will find the mineral water taps where you can see more locals than tourists. The large number of hot natural springs is the main reason for the ancient city of Sofia to emerge because this is what initially attracted the first settlers in the 4th century before Christ. Bulgaria is among the major spa destinations in Europe due to the abundance of thermal springs throughout the country. There are about 800 mineral springs registered and all of them have a different composition, temperature and properties of the water. The water has a healing effect on the cardiovascular, nervous and endocrine systems and benefits the muscles, bones and joints. Unfortunately, the thermal springs in Bulgaria are not used to their full capacity. Another interesting place I would like to suggest to you is the Dragalevci Monastery which is situated in the skirts of the Vitusha mountain and it's so close to Sofia that you can reach it by getting the public transport. The Dragalevci Monastery of the Holy Mother of God was built in the mid 14th century by King Ivan Alexander. During the Ottoman invasion, the monastery was destroyed and it was restored in the late 15th century when it became an important literary hub. The reason I have included it in the list of the hidden gems is the fact that most of the tourists, especially foreigners, um, only visit the Rila monastery. And uh, the Dragalevci monastery is visited mainly by the locals. The convent consists of a church and residential and farm buildings. The oldest building preserved from the old monastery complex is the church which is a basilica dating to the 15th century. It's decorated with two layers of frescoes. Inside the church you can see fragments from famous biblical scenes and on the outside you can see portraits of prominent monks 
such as St. John of Rila and St. Petka. You can also combine your visit to the monastery with a hike to the Vitusha mountain. And if you walk for another 50 minutes, you're going to reach the Aleko waterfalls. You can either hike to the mountain or you can walk from the higher slopes of Vitusha and descend towards the monastery. There is a lovely waterfall about 2-3 kilometers away from the monastery and I recommend you to see it. This time I was with a friend and we went to the mill in Bulgarian Vodenicata. This is actually one of the best traditional restaurants in Sofia and it's quite close to the Dragalevci monastery. Vodenicata is the only restaurant in Sofia where you can watch the traditional dance on call. The food was fantastic. We ordered a few summer dishes like zucchini with yogurt and garlic, pepper burek, which is a stuffed pepper with feta cheese, breaded and fried. We also got fried potatoes with feta cheese, a portion of meatballs with salad, garlic bread and two beers. If you come for a walk at the Royal Garden, you are going to stumble upon this unique monument, the Monument of Trabant. It's made by Georgi Tonov in 1961 and it represents the most iconic car from the time of communism. The last on the list is the Zaimov Park and the nearby restaurant Raketa Rakia. Sofia has a lot of green spaces throughout the city, but the one I'm going to show you now is less popular, or shall I say, it has more of a local feel. It's called the Zaimov Park. Let's go and explore it. It was almost 40 degrees, that's why the park was empty. And after exploring it for a few minutes, I started roasting and decided to go straight to the restaurant. If you happen to visit this uh, Zaimov Park, uh, make sure to go to the Rakieta Rakia restaurant. It's a very unique restaurant. Uh, it's something between a restaurant, a museum, and it has the largest selection of Rakia. The decoration includes old TV sets, radios, souvenirs and other objects that remind of the communist era. There are so many things on the shelves that it's almost like a museum. I wanted something light because of the heat and I ordered a tripe soup which is traditional for Bulgaria and I also got a salad. The menu includes 170 types of rakia and I suppose that all these bottles on the shelves are bottles of rakia from different regions of Bulgaria. If you don't know what rakia is, this is the national alcoholic beverage of Bulgaria. It's similar to the Italian grappas and it's made of grapes, plums and apricots. The alcoholic content of rakia is 40%, but home-produced rakia can be even stronger. Raketa rakia used to be more popular with the locals, perhaps due to its location, but it's beginning to attract more and more foreign visitors. <laughs> 